Kathy Williams DeVries here uh, bringing you a tutorial video on um, a study required for Grade 6 Trinity Guildhall clarinet exams called Entanglement. Uh, it's in uh, the James Ray book of studies. Uh, it is the 34th study on page 28 and uh, it is a study that um, Go, that ranges between 5878 and a little bit of 38 and 32 but I believe that the main rhythm should focus solely on quavers and on the idea of 3 and 2 because uh, you've the in the 58 it's definitely 3 2 <laughs> So you must have up in your head, um, and you could uh, and you can actually on some metronomes um, go three and two. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's not in rhythm, it's in beat. Then, and three and two, so. So, the best thing to do is get, um, I just have a little boss Dr. Beat um, uh, metronome. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. So I recommend that you get one of these. Um, the predominant um, rhythm is three and two. Uh, in the seven and eight, it's a three and four or three and two and two. Um, the three, two, um, just keep counting the quavers. Uh, and there is a five, four as well. Uh, interestingly enough, the five, four is two groups of three and a group of four. Not normally something you would get in a five, four. Now, when you look at this piece, Really, you only have to learn probably about um, two different ideas. Because the first idea going from the forte um, up to the bar nine piano is repeated in the piano. Um, and then you come to the section uh, in seven, eight, and you discover that and then all of a sudden that's repeated and all of a sudden you're back into uh, the first tune again. Now I do recommend that a lot of the time um, in order to make things a little bit easier for yourself uh, you can leave the right hand down especially in the first and third bars where you're going from a D to a A back up to a D C G you can actually leave a lot of the right hand down. I prefer to leave two fingers down just so that um, the G isn't a little bit too fuzzy, but leave it down. In fact, I would, I would leave those three fingers down. You know, I'd leave that down for the whole bar. Now, the next bar you want a really clean B flat to F um, and the way you do that is by see see how I just sort of roll my thumb up 
I roll my thumb up to the register key because if you keep the um, hole down on the B flat, it's really fuzzy. And you may want to take that out um, by itself. Now, in this bar, going through the E flat, you will need to use uh, the, right, the E flat with the right hand trill key because you're going up to a D. If you use this E flat, it makes it really hard to get to the D because you've got a, you've got a slide and it's messy. So, thumb away from the thumb hole and up to the register key and go from the A flat to the E flat. And then we repeat the first bar. Now I'll give you a little hint. Um, a lot of this exercise in the first and third parts of it um, are in what we call the throat tone area or um, G, A flat, A and B flat. Um, traditionally not a really nice register of the clarinet. and um, but a little trick when playing a G and an A flat, if you stick these two fingers down, um, in addition, in addition to making it easy to get to the um, the D's and the C's, is that it sounds a little better. I'll show you. It just strengthens it up a little bit. Probably makes it a little less sharp. So. slowly so you can play along and you can see what I do with my fingers. Now in the next couple of bars, um, note in bar 6 you need to get to an E flat. So therefore, in bar 5, you will need to use the right hand C so that you can get to that E flat. So if you watch my fingers, note I leave the two fingers down for the A flat because then um, I wouldn't advise leaving any fingers down in bar 7. In bar 8, you can use either D sharps, remembering of course that a D sharp is an E flat. So if I play the entire first phrase slowly, did that in one breath because another thing that we need to think about when uh, we play a piece of music is where to breathe now if you now I played that very slow and I was still able to get that in the one breath you don't really want to be breathing in the middle of phrases because if you're playing it faster it's not such a problem <laughs> play the first two phrases uh, without needing a breath. Um, if you absolutely desperately do need a breath, breathe after the fourth bar and the eighth bar and the twelfth bar, um, but that's only if you desperately need a breath. It's actually really important to figure out where you're going to breathe because when you get to a concert or exam situation you want to have that stuff worked out so that you don't panic and you want to mark it in. So the second phrase, it's piano, but it's exactly the same as the first. So now we come to bar 17, and uh, this next phrase um, is four bars long before it's repeated somewhat. 
So. First of all, uh, you'll notice there's a little sub tune. If we take the C's out, take the um, upper notes out. What you want to do is um, bring those notes out a little bit, put a little tenuto on the lower notes. Just to make things a little interesting. And what you also want to do is place more air on the lower notes so that the C comes out a little bit easier. come out anyway you really don't need to push it so uh, now the D flat now you really want to coordinate actually these fingers going from a D to the C is not easy because you're raising quite a few fingers so you want to coordinate that eight bar the D flat remembering that's also a C sharp I would keep it in the one hand and use the right hand D flat now the next phrase is very similar but a slight change um, instead of five eight seven eight we've got um, four three eight bars In the 3 8, we do have accents on the lower note and it, it provides a little tune so that if you place a slight accent, okay, so that whole, that whole couple of phrases. So forte to forte. I've just been playing forte just to give you an idea of the sound, but you don't want to get too loud in the mezzo forte because we do have to get to a double forte by bar 27. Okay, and then we've got the 3 8 and 5 4 bars before we get to. Um, the original first phrase. Now we're hitting a C sharp going to a B. We want to get that really smooth. And I should note that uh, those wide leaps between the D and the C need to have really really nice legato. You don't want you want and you get that easier if you place a little bit more emphasis on the lower note. But you want to go from C sharp to B. And you want to use the, the top lip a little bit and really pull it down so that you don't uh, squeak. And we do have accents. Uh, now, because we're playing a right hand E flat, uh, we want to do a left hand D flat and you really want to coordinate also the E flat to the F something I even still have trouble with so and all the time counting in your head tick 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 so that you hold the C sharp for five ticks. And then we're back into the original. So what I 
I'll do is I'll play it through uh, at a few different speeds just for you to get an idea. Um, it says frantic, so I'm assuming it's about as fast as you can possibly play it. But uh, let me play it at a slow speed for you, and you can watch my fingers. <laughs> So that's at a slow speed. Let me play it a little bit quicker for you to give you an idea of what it should sound like at the end. of the phrases which is uh, about eight bars um, I would advise you not to breathe at 27 if you can possibly help it uh, try to breathe at the end of 28 um, but uh, work these out yourself and and with your teacher and mark them in and always practice them and don't forget to have the occasional um, uh, emergency breath in there because you know that when you're nervous for your exam that um, you, f you have trouble breathing you breathe a lot shallower um, and uh, I mean you should see my music there's breath marks everywhere you don't want to be breathing in the middle of phrases so um, that's just uh, a short um, introduction to entanglement um, if you have any studies that you would like me to look at, uh, please uh, get in contact and uh, I will do that for you. Uh, and don't forget to check out my uh, scale series on the Trinity Guildhall uh, scale requirements, um, grades 1 to 8. Uh, lots of um, important information in there, especially regarding fingerings. Um, so thanks for your attention. Bye for now.